an Igbo social cultural think tank with members both in Nigeria and in the diaspora, Nzuko Umunna, has called on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to extend the ongoing continuous voter registration exercise beyond the 30th of June 2022. Now, that has been the deadline that was set aside by INEC to address um, the surge in eligible voters. Now, this group has said it has observed the enthusiasm of eligible voters to get registered, as well as INEC's assurances that no voter will be disenfranchised, stressing that the Commission has demonstrated uncommon patriotism. Now, in a signed statement by the Executive Secretary of the group, Ngozi Odumoko, the group noted that it had observed the huge turnouts of eligible voters, especially youth, for voter registration across the country. Well, joining us to shed more light on this is National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee uh, for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Mr. Festus Okoye. It's good to have you join us, Mr. Okoye. Yeah, thank you so much. Great. Um, it was a beautiful sight for a lot of Nigerians to see what happened um, in Lagos, where you, we saw, in fact, some people would have wondered if it was a concert that people were going for. But then, of course, it was the turnout for the voters' registration um, in Lagos State. And I also understand that this is being replicated across the country. Um, but there are those who think that INEC should allow for these voter registration to be continuous because every single day a Nigerian turns 18. Is that something that INEC is capable of doing and why is it not the case? Well, uh, you know that uh, for this present registration, uh, we started the online pre-registration on the 28th day of June, uh, 2021. And um, uh, in July, we started the physical registration in 37 of our state offices and um, the 774 local government areas across the federation. Um, uh, although we didn't roll out in some local governments, I mean, some, uh, in some local governments, on account of security challenges, uh, because we had a meeting with the various political parties, with the civil society groups and organizations, uh, with the security agencies, and we agreed on a rollout and rollback uh, procedure that if we roll out and we encounter serious security challenges, we will roll back uh, to our, uh, our our offices, and that's exactly what we have um, uh, what we have been doing. Now, uh, this present uh, challenge we have, this present surge. Um, it, is, it, is, it is something that is slightly unusual. Uh, this is because this present registration the Commission is doing is not a fresh registration. We already have over 85 million Nigerians uh, in our database, those who have registered previously. So this present CBR is only for those who have never ever registered, registered and those who have found a thing from the last time we carried out our voter registration process. But what is going on is that those who have lost their PVC, uh, rather than enter our online portal or go and report that they have lost their PVC, we go and register afresh. Those whose PVCs have been defaced, we go and register afresh. Those who want to do voter transfer uh, from one state to the other, from one local government to the other, or from one registration area to the other, we register afresh. And that is not what this entire process uh, is, is all about. If you look at the figure we released during the first and second quarter of registration, uh, you will see that out of the 2,523,458 valid regis uh, 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 completed registrations, 1,390,519 were invalid. And these are people who engage in multiple or double registration. So this registration is not for everybody. Is for only those who turn 18 and those who have never registered uh, in, in any election uh, whatsoever. And this thing has been going on for almost a year, a year now. Sometimes our registration officers register one single individual a day. But you know, um, this 11th hour uh, a challenge, this 11th hour syndrome is part of the pain of, mm. of, of, our, of our political process. We normally wait until the last minute and until the last hour before we go to register. But we have taken all these things on board, and we have taken remedial action uh, to uh, address the acute uh, challenges in some of the states of the federation. 
Um, I must say it's a it's a, 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 a it's a heinous task for INEC to take on. But um, just to go back to something that you made reference to, the fact that there are lots of people who do not necessarily need to uh, register afresh who are doing so. My question is. Um, the reason why we're having these issues, could it be that maybe the, the, the information was not clear enough, people were not educated as to what this CVR is for, so that they would not be showing up for those instances? For example, uh, a couple of us still have our temporary voters' cards because we were unable to find our, to get our PVCs. And there has to be information as to how we can get those PVCs. And for those who are supposed to be transferring their uh, polling to new polling units, they're supposed to have access to that information. Now, again, I'm sure you would tell me it's on your website. How many Nigerians have access to the internet and how many of them can get that information if it's not readily put out there in clear words for them to understand? Now, the truth of the matter is that when you go to any of our state or local government offices uh, to register. The registration officer will ask you whether you have registered before. Sometimes when people go to these registration centers and ask them whether they have registered before, they will say no. But in truth and in fact, they have registered before. And some of them live in the cities and they have left, left their voters' cards uh, uh, down there in the village. And they knew this new registration. Uh, for purposes of entering the market or entering the church or giving one thing, one thing or the other. Some people who ordinarily should do transfer, they need to do transfer, they want to go for outright registration. Now, if you come and say that you have lost your permanent voter's card, sometimes we require you to provide an app to that bit showing that you have lost your permanent voter's card. And some of our people, when you ask them to, to provide an app to that bit, they will just simply move to another local government or another registration area and go and register. When they ask them whether they have registered before, they will say no. But when we bring the uh, 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 registration to our office and we run our automated biometric identification system, we will find out that they have registered before and their new registration will be classified as invalid. We've employed the, the services of traditional rulers. We have done direct advocacy. We are using the television. We are using the radio to try to educate our people on some of these issues. So many of our youth have also gone on the on on our online uh, uh, portal uh, to go and utilize the services. But what we are saying is that we recognize the fact that there has been a huge challenge in terms of registration. There has been a surge in the registration figures, and based on that. Just last week, the Commission deployed an additional 209 uh, uh, um, iBed machines, including fingerprint scanners and thermal printers, uh, to, uh, to Kanu State, to Lagos State, uh, to the five states of the Southeast, and to Oyo State, so that we can ameliorate the areas of acute challenge. Uh, but we're on top of the situation, and we believe uh, that we will address uh, this uh, present surge in voter registration uh, uh, figures. Um, I'm, I'm going to you know, ask this question walking on eggshells here. Um, why does INEC have to do this all alone? Because I know that it's a stretch. You have elections in Ekiti, you're going to have Oshun, um, and of course you're preparing for the general election, so it's, uh, it's a bit uh, of, you know, work for you. Why isn't there a co collaboration of sorts? I'm asking because we have banks who take our biometrics. We have the telecommunication companies who take our biometrics. We have the customs or the immigrations, I beg your pardon, who take our biometrics. Why can't we work with especially these telecommunication companies to help INIC, um, you know, in some of these registrations instead of stretching itself thin? Only a suggestion and a question. Uh, uh, um, the Independent National Electoral Commission has the, has the largest database of Nigerians um, than any other company you can think of, any other, any other organization. We presently we have the data of 85 million Nigerians in our in our database. Um, uh, what I'm what I'm saying is that we have spaced out these registrations in such a way that people will not be stressed. For those who are computer literate, for those who can go online, we made it as simple as possible. You just go online, key in all your information. The only thing you go to our office to do is to go and capture your fingerprints and capture your pictures, and you go away. And if you do that, 
the process lasts for less, less, than, less than five minutes. And it's been going on for over a period of one year. Mm -hmm. But I think that it will not be right uh, for uh, some market leaders to close down the market on at least 5,000 uh, uh, of their members on one registration center that has one or two hybrid machines and they expect us to do magic. No, that is not the way things, things are done. We expected a situation where in a day a registration machine will register maybe between 100 and 150 individuals per day. And we have spent out this thing over a period of one year, taking into consideration that at the end of the day, we are going to do what we call display for claims and objections. We are also going to clean up the voters' register. We are also going to print these voters' register and give to the political parties, get some ready for, um, uh, uh, for, the, for the main ele election system, then print the permanent voters' cards of all the registrants and then get them to come and collect these uh, uh, permanent voters' cards instead of the elections. And then stop everything relating to registration of dating of the voter register and revision of the voter register 90 days to the election. So all these things have to be taken on board in terms of looking at what we do, what we do. So that's why we step up, space the team out to a field of why, why, why. Yeah, but, but the, unfortunately, but, but what you're telling me is it, still, it, it sounds more like you're taking on a lot, just as I said at the beginning. And, and that's why I'm asking, why can't this, why can't you enlist people who have also what it takes to get bio data or to get information and then feed it to you, making your job easier? Because we, people go to banks every day. People go to telecommunication companies every day to fix their lines or do whatever, register for their NIN. Why can't you enlist these people to help um, you know, save you the trouble because you're complaining about 5,000 people per day as opposed to your expectation of 100. So what do you do to reduce that stress? Are there no strategies in sight or maybe, let me say, let me use the Nigerian palace in the pipeline that would help you uh, reduce the trouble that you're facing right now? No, I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. The commission is not complaining that 5,000 people arrived in the uh, registration center in a day. That is not the complaint. The complaint and the issue is that this registration process has been going on for one year, one whole year. Sometimes our registration officers register one single individual per day. And we set this thing out in such a way that anybody who is desirous of registering, we have an opportunity of doing that seamlessly without any form of stress. But the challenge is that most of our people did not utilize this 11 month period. Rather, just because the registration is about to close, we now have a surge uh, to the extent that uh, some of our registration centers are overwhelmed. Mm. But what we have done is that we have deployed additional machines and we are going to tackle uh, some of these challenges. In the next few days, uh, the commission will meet, review the situation, and then do whatever it takes to make sure that every Nigerian who is registrable and who presents himself or herself to any of our registration officers gets to register. We are not going to give any Nigeria behind, and we are going to make sure that people get to register because we believe that it's their sovereign right, and they also have the right uh, to exercise their uh, civic, uh, civic right by voting for candidates of their choice in any election. Finally, before I let you go, Doctor, um, we have heard many people, especially in the Southeast, the South South, the Southwest, complain that. Before the 2019 elections, they felt disenfranchised as they were unable to get their voter cards. They, they kept saying that every time they showed up, they would say, oh, it's not ready. And that's how some of them were unable to vote during the elections. It's not that they were not showing up to get those cards, but they, they, they were not given the cards. Now, I know that you're an INEC representative and you're going to help us to you know, debunk this. Um, how are we also certain that we will not hear the same complaints before the 2023 elections. Um, what is INEC doing within its power to make sure that nobody is left out, especially those who have registered early enough to get access to those cards? What's the time frame between the registration process and when they can get their cards? For those who register during the fourth and second quarter of registration, the fourth quarter of registration started on the 28th day of June, uh, 2021. And then by the second quarter, ended on the 14th day of January 2022. Those people who registered during that particular period, their cards are ready and have been 
forwarded to our local government offices, Kotekou, as well, go and pick up their cars. And for those who register green this first quarter, and those who are registering green this fourth quarter, we want to make sure that we print their cars well ahead of the 2023 general election, so that they can collect these cars. But you know, if we keep on uh, in this project of extending the time and extending the time, by the time we are going to print the permanent voters' cards, it will be too late for the election. And then the issue of getting people to collect these cards becomes a huge challenge. And so we want to complete everything relating to voter registration and then get these cards ready. Send book SMS to all the uh, those whose cards are ready. And then those who have email addresses, we contact them through their email addresses and get them to come and collect these cards. But no card will be collected by proxy. Every registered voter must collect the card by himself or herself. And we are not going to give the card in box to any individual or allow anybody to collect any of the, those cards by proxy. Well, uh, you have a daunting task ahead of you uh, and also ahead of the 2023 elections. We wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Mr. Festus Okoye is the of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it, always. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. That's it on Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anakul. And tomorrow we return with more pressing political issues as we talk for development. Have a good evening.